Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're on STV Edinburgh and STV Glasgow. The main headlines tonight, the buck stops with the manager. Ronnie Dyla's Celtic crash out of the Champions League. We will talk about that 2-0 defeat to Malmo. Dunfermline dumped Dundee out of the League Cup. And we'll also discuss some of the big games tonight in the League Cup because Airdrie and Stranraer are going to attempt to do the same to Rangers and Hibernian. And we've got a cup hero in the studio as our boot room guest, Fraser Wright, gets set for a new career this season with Dumbarton. Delighted to have Fraser with us. And um, we will talk undoubtedly about the emotions of saying farewell to your Saints mates. But I, I look to Ruffy and I say to you right now, uh, the storm clouds are gathering because quite simply, Going out of the Champions League to Malmo, not good enough. No, and uh, as, as usually happens, it'll pick up pace as the days go on. Uh, we have to blame somebody. Uh, Ronnie Daly up there has always said, and I've repeated it on numerous occasions, uh, progress has been made. Uh, <coughs> last year he came out with a statement that we've failed in Europe this year, but judge me next year. And we're in the same scenario. Uh, failed again. And uh, although... He, he must take most of the blame, there's no doubt about that. But I would like to really know what his remit is at the club. You know, I would like to know what the powers would be, uh, assess him on how successful he is. Because if uh, one of his remit is to get into the, champ the Champions League stages, then I don't think he's been helped. I don't think he's been given uh, any money uh, to get players, to get them into the next stage. I think they've brought in, I think it's five players worth maybe four million pounds with no <coughs> European experience at all. Yeah. So that ties his hands a wee bit. But uh, in saying that, they should be good enough to beat Malmo. I thought they were a pretty ordinary side. And uh, if they'd got into the, the, the group stage, it would be been absolutely fantastic. But I'm afraid he's put himself up there to be shot down. Yeah, uh, and uh, Fraser, with Celtic and their spending power on the domestic front, they don't. No Celtic manager gets credit for winning the Premiership because it, it's viewed as a given. Yeah, they're they're expected to win the league every year. The the, the players have got uh, just shows you the difference in the gulf between the the, the Premier League and when you go into Europe and yeah. play the top quality teams. Yeah, uh, and uh, again, uh, I, I charted it to when Celtic beat Barcelona in November, I think 2012, roughly from there. There was just a gradual down trading uh, from Celtic and balancing the books, which I think if you look at the way the board has operated, they've been financially prudent, but the Celtic fans don't want to see that. And I think they have basically uh, showed their displeasure by not going to Europa League games. And they're not the only club no. that views that competition with disdain. No, I think when you're at a club who's used to the big uh, Champions League nights, uh, as Celtic have been, the, the supporters are weaned on it. There's no doubt about it that uh, in the earlier days, the, the board threw money at it. There's no doubt about that. We look at the £6 million players that were bringing in to get to the Champions League to recoup the money that they'd laid out, and they were successful in doing that. But over the last couple of years, there's been a change. You know, there's been a policy to bring in young players at a very cheap price and try and sell them on. They've been successful, obviously, with the Winyamas and the Hoopers and, the, and Foster and all that, but it seems to have went down another gear. And uh, I'm sure the supporters will be disappointed. You're right in what you're saying. SPFL, the league's a given, you know, and if you win another cup, that's a successful season. But I don't know if you would agree with me that most of the managers and, and Scottish teams could have done that. You know, you could have given it to anybody in our league, the, the manager's job, if that was the remit to do. But uh, to go that wee bit further, uh, I think you've got to throw money at it. Yeah, and, and Fraser, you'll know as a centre-half, uh, Virgil van Dijk has received a lot of praise. Um, it was the strongest indication last night from him that, you know, he's waiting now for someone to come in and get him. And, and it's only natural that a player wants to test himself at an even higher level. Yeah, definitely. You, you see every week he's cruising through games in the, the Premier League. He's, he doesn't seem to be getting out of second gear. And, um, but last night, I think you can see when it is a step up into the Champions League, then it, maybe he did struggle a wee bit. But um, there'll be teams willing to take a chance on him. Here's a question for you, because I know you're doing your coaching badge at the moment. Um, have you ever um, been uh, involved in zonal marking? Is it something you like? Is it something that you would advocate if you eventually got on to coaching? No. Never, never, never played it in the 
I don't see the, the point in it because it just gives people excuses. Um, you get a man in the, the penalty box, that's your man. If he scores, it's your fault. If uh, you're doing zonal marking and someone scores, then fingers can get pointed and people can't take responsibility. And I think Fraser Wright has just summed up exactly what happened last night, Ruffy. Done by two set pieces. I mean, the marking, and at times they were static in the back. Two things I want to get your thoughts on uh, on this. Uh, Ronnie Dyla, it's a damning indictment from the manager when he said the players uh, looked frightened and scared. Yeah, uh, and, and I don't know if you saw the interview after, but I think Craig Gordon and Chris Commons were very, very quick to, to put that to bed. You know, I don't think any player would like to be associated by being scared going into a game. Uh, it, it, I think he used the wrong word. Uh, but uh, in saying that, you know, that it was a very, very poor performance. You're right. You know, corner kicks, ball coming into the box. That's where you're looking for a Van Dyke, somebody with a big centre half, you know, would come and win balls. But he, he was going down the way rather than up. And then Craig Gordon had to make a decision whether he come or not to come. And the boy had the run on him and uh, nicked in in front. And it was disappointing because I think that was three goals like that over the two legs that they lost. Yeah, uh, and the, the other part of it is that Scott Brown, I think speaking for all the players, he said he felt ashamed of their performance. They never got it going. They didn't look like scoring, Ruffy. You know, I was listening to Chris Sutton uh, doing his co-commentary on it. They had to pay six million to get a player of his standing. They don't have a plan B if Griffiths yeah. doesn't score. No, as I said earlier, there is no Champions League experience. I think at the end of the game, there was five people on the park who probably never played in European games at the highest level. So you're going to be a wee bit apprehensive. You're not going into the games with the confidence like the back in the Suttons, the Larsons and everybody who have had are playing in Champions League games. So you're going to be, be a wee bit apprehensive, particularly when you're not winning and the pressure's on to get a goal. And they, they just don't have the Champions League player now. They've got Europa Cup player players, there's no doubt about that, they may get a reasonable run in the Europa Cup, but as you've just touched on earlier, Champions League is what matters. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, Premiership clubs will be gutted, they'll miss out on I think somewhere in the region of £2 million uh, shared between the clubs. Uh, Fraser, it's difficult for us in our country as a whole when we look and we see all our clubs, most of them out, Celtic now with a competition that they really don't want to be in. I mean, that's a sad indictment of where we are in Scottish football. Yeah, definitely. But if you look at the Aberdeen, St Johnson and Inverness that were in the Europa League, they'd have given their hind teeth to actually qualify for the, the group stages and unfortunately they didn't do it. And you see now Celtic don't want, well, they probably want to be in the Europa League, but they would have preferred the Champions League. From a St Johnston perspective, when you look at the teams that you're coming up against, is there something that they possess that we don't? Is it, is it down to the better players or is it the way they play the game? Um, I think it's probably the way they play the game. Um, the team that we played were a very good technically team and uh, passed the ball about well and had a system that they played and they knew what they were doing. Um, that just uh, shows that they know what they are doing and they've, they've worked on it, so that just stumped us. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that in itself, again, is something questions need to be asked in the aftermath of a situation where we were hoping, Ruffy, as we watched Scottish football, we were hoping uh, we were coming out of bottoming out if, mm -hmm. in effect in Scottish football, but this merely sets us back again. Yeah, it does. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, we're looking at the teams at Celtic we're coming up against, Carabag, and we've never heard of them before. And, and all of a sudden, these teams seem to be going up the way, whereas we sort of a, a stabled out and uh, I don't know whether it's money or it's uh, the players that they're bringing in uh, but we certainly are not up there and but like St Johnson I mean I'm, I'm sure you know if St Johnson had two or three years in Europe and playing against these teams they, they would get into that style of football and be used to playing European football and it would benefit everybody in the long run. Yeah what now for the what do you think is going to happen now. I mean, a lot of people are looking and saying, well, they'll be like, exactly what you're saying, Ruffy, about Ronnie Dyla. Where does he go from here on this? Does he, is he now going to be heavily scrutinised in, in what he does in the Europa League? I think he'll be scrutinised. I don't think he's in any danger of losing his job. 
you know, because I, I go back to the remit, the board will meet meet him at the beginning of, of the season and say to him, look, this is what we'd like you to achieve, you know, and obviously one was getting into the Champions League, but certainly uh, winning the league, as we all know, is practically a given, winning a cup, and at the end uh, they'll, they'll stroll on, but I'm, I'm sure someday, somewhere down the line we'd have to say, you know, do we really want to be a Champions League team again? And if you do, you have to start buying better players. We'll talk more about that. You can give us your thoughts uh, at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. We'll give you that in the uh, second part of the programme uh, to get involved and give us your thoughts. Uh, Fraser Wright is our guest. We're going to talk to Fraser about his hopes and ambitions uh, with his year deal at Dumbarton. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Thanks for your company on STV Edinburgh and STV Glasgow. We are on uh, Monday to Friday, half past six. Of course, you can catch the later repeats just in case you've sneaked out and you have to go for dinner somewhere, Ruffy, and then you have to come back in uh, and think you missed it. And also on a Saturday afternoon at two o'clock, right through till six o'clock, you can join us for the best of uh, the scores right across uh, Great Britain, uh, but with the emphasis on Scottish football. Fraser Wright is with us here as our boot room guest in the studio. Fraser, uh, it's a strange situation. You joined Dumbarton having said goodbye to your mates at St Johnston. It must have been emotional when you consider all that you've gone through and the ultimate of winning the Scottish Cup. Yeah, definitely. I've been talking to the manager for about a week about going and then deciding on Monday that that was my time. So after training on Monday, that was it. said my goodbyes and managed to Keep it together, just yeah, absolutely. Hey, don't don't worry about guys crying. Ruffy <laughs> cries. Ruffy cries every two, two or three weeks, depending on what movie he's watching. Um, I, I mean, did you see it coming? Did you feel as if there was a, there was going to be a parting of the ways? Uh, not until I'd spoke to the manager. Uh, I knew my part this season at St Johnson was going to be less than it had been, but I still thought I had a part to play. And he's just he, he said to me that. I'm not going to be involved as much as he thought I was going to be, so if I wanted to, I could go. Yeah, what influenced you? What really made you jump at uh, Steve Aitken at Dumbarton? Because undoubtedly, there would have been other clubs interested in getting you. Yeah, I actually spoke to Stevie in the summer about going in the summer, but I, I thought I'll give St Johnson another year and keep, stay there. And then, obviously, when he heard that I was in talks to come out of my contract, he was straight on the phone and having known him for about 15 years now I think it is, uh, it was an easy, easy decision for me. Yeah, will it help or is it something that will give you a real chance to, to, to look towards the coaching? Yeah definitely, it's, uh, I've got a bit more spare time in my hands now being part time, um, I can do my courses, I can look at other aspects as well to help me in finding a job. So. Uh, It'll definitely help. Yeah, uh, are you. Ho I mean, he, here's the. We had the, we had uh, Roddy Manley on uh, yesterday talking about players and the need then after their football career to try and find a job. Um, what are you going to try and supplement the part time with, or is it too early to think about that? Uh, it's too early just now. I mean, I'm in fortunate enough position that I, right now I don't need to think about that. I can concentrate doing my coaching badges. I'm going to do a video analysis course as well. Yeah, I've just qualified as a personal trainer as well, so I've got some things that I can maybe throw together and hopefully that'll help me get a job. Yeah, That's good, I thought he was going to say he's cash rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ruffy, every, every footballer in Scotland has to think about a job at some no, point. I was going to ask him as well, obviously we've been down to Dumbarton and uh, me and Peter like to have a wee sweep uh, now and again, and as you've noticed, Dumbarton's only got one stand. Uh, how many times do you think you'll be able to kick the ball at the stadium? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at least twice a game, I think. <laughs> I mean, the good thing about Stevie, we've had him on the programme. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's got an ethos in football, the way he wants it played, and I, I think the, Dun Dun the Dumbarton fans are really warming to him. Yeah, definitely. And last night was the first training session with him, and it was all about keeping the ball, uh, possession, keep a hold of the ball. That way you can't get, get hurt. And, uh, Looks like that's the way he's going to be going forward. Yeah, but have you been surprised at the level of player, including yourself, that he's been able to recruit? Uh, no, not really. Um, I think you see the, the strength of the championship now. Um, there's a lot of good teams in that, and um, with the way Scottish football is going, the, the money side of it, there's not a massive difference between the Premier League and the Championship now. So, I think uh, 
if you're wanting to stay as high as you can, the Championship's a, as good a, a league as any other. Yeah, well, we wish you well in that, Fraser. And we're going to talk about um, the League Cup from last night as well. I tried to build it up saying the big League Cup and the games, these are the early stages where the last thing you want, okay. Ruffy, is to get bumped out. Now, your prediction was way yeah, off the mark. And I've got, I've no, got many I'm... a mother will mate <laughs> who said to me, calm down, no. here's the score lines. Now, you suggested East Fife were going to bump Motherwell out. Uh, let's have a look. There you have it. Dunfermline yeah. uh, were the cup shocks, really. Motherwell cruised against East Fife. Hearts, uh, do you think Hearts will ever lose a game, Rocky? Do you think they'll go unbeaten? For well, I can't mean, how many games have they won by the odd goal? That's absolutely incredible. But uh, these five won, uh, won nothing, you know, with not long to go. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there would have been a few nervous people in that uh, just before the 90, but obviously they won an extra time. But uh, Patrick Thistle is a, is a blow, you know, to everybody up there. And uh, I have to say, what about your team, Dundee? Yeah, uh, I must admit, um, I... I was just uh, going to panic, actually, because we have Gary Harkins coming on the show, and I thought, mm, no, we don't, after <laughs> after a defeat like that. But Dunfermline, well capable of it. Alan Johnson has bounced back, uh, Fraser, to get the best out of the pars. Yeah, they've had a brilliant start to the season. I think the first four games, they scored 20 goals. A um, bit of a blip last week at Peterhead, but um, they've had a terrific start. Yeah. I was going to say to, to Fraser, why, why is it Fraser, when we come to League Cups like that, we get teams for the lower divisions coming up against the SPL t teams and they seem to do particularly well? I don't know, you always you always notice it like the Tuesday nights, uh, the League Cup when it starts off, that the, the lower league teams always seem to be able to get a result against them. Um, I'm not sure because I'm pretty sure all the, the Premier League teams are taking it seriously and wanting to, to get to the, the final. Yeah, um, it's always good to get a bit of silverware. I mean, you'll forever be associated with that St. Johnson side. I mean, as, as Ruffy will tell you, there's only another 2,500 dinners to go to in your career, Fraser, because <laughs> in Perth, those names will roll off the tongue forever in a day, the Scottish Cup winners. Yeah, um, to win the Cup for the first time in the club's history is a brilliant achievement for us all, and uh, I'll be dining out on it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Ruffy, honest. Don't get me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's, a, he's doing personal training. I don't think he's going to let himself go. Uh, did the memories come flooding back? Is it still fresh in your mind about it? Could you? How long did it take for you to eventually let it sink in? Yeah, it took a wee while for it to sink in, and the, the memories have been flooding back this week. Well, the messages I've been getting off all the fans when I when I left St. Johnson and. It's just, it's always good to have those memories. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well listen, uh, it's a new chapter and we wish you well in it. Um, we had a couple of cup shocks, Ruffy, uh, last night. Are we going to get any tonight? Adrianians against Rangers. Uh, still tickets available for that game. I'm sure there'll be fans just thinking they might take a walk up, uh, see uh, how that game pans out. And, of course, Hibs against Stranra. No, I don't think either of these two will struggle, particularly uh, Hibs being at home. You know, I think things are beginning to go the right way. They never get the good result against Rangers, but they certainly had the chances there and uh, they just need to go on some kind of run. Uh, it'll be interesting at Rangers to see if uh, he sticks by his best 11 or he starts giving some fringe players a game. But they want to keep the momentum going as well because they're firing on all cylinders. Yeah, Fraser, I was surprised he uh, allowed Darren McGregor to go Player of the Year last year and it looks as if Marius Zal Lucas is another one that tells you he's he's starting to clear out players that he doesn't want to be part of the future. Yeah, definitely. He looks like a man that's got a plan how he wants to take the club forward, and he's certainly doing that just now by clearing the decks. Yeah. Uh, what have you made of McGregor? Yeah. Any, any time I've seen him play, he's he's, he's a good centre half. He's aggressive. He's uh, quick, and he'll definitely do a good job for Hibs. Yeah. So any no shock trophy in no. your mind? None at all tonight, no. And the other point I was going to make to you is Dundee United don't seem uh, to be giving up the chase in Billy Mackay. They desperately want to try and get some firepower. Yeah, I think Jackie's uh, identified the right centre forward. Uh, we saw what he did up here. I think he had a tremendous season one year, 25, 26 goals up at Inverness. Uh, practically every time the ball got put in the box, he was putting it in the back of the net. That's what they're lacking. Uh, obviously, they've lost their three big players, so... I think they'll pursue that one. I think they will. And, he, and if he gets them, it's a, a start on the way up. Yeah. Um, Fraser, if there is such a thing as a, an English team that's your favourite, is, is there one in particular? Um, 
Not really, no. Um, I used to have a Tottenham Hotspur away kit when I was younger, but I think that was just because I liked the kit. <laughs> yeah. Ah, was it the yellow one? Yeah, the yellow one. Uh. Uh, Ruffy, was there any English club that you had as a, a kit? Uh, I think it was Crystal Palace. What? Yeah, Crystal, Crystal Palace. Palace. Yeah, I think I got the strip off the rag, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I, was hoping, I was hoping for something along the lines of a Liverpool. Um, maybe I'm the only one. Um, tonight, I was just taking us nicely into, is there going to be a miracle for Bruges or um, that late goal from Marion Fellini? Is that enough now of a cushion to get United through? You would like to think so, where the European experience is what I touched on earlier on. They certainly have got European experience, so you would like to think the players that he's got at his uh, disposal will be able to see with this one out the road. Interesting, he's talking about playing Fellini in number nine. Yeah. You're not having it? Not having that at all, no. OK. Uh, based on what Ruffy said about Motherwell against East Fife last night, Fellini is on for a hat-trick. Just get your money on it right now. Um, we will discuss, undoubtedly, uh, Manchester United. Will they be in the group stages of the Champions League? It just hasn't worked out for Celtic. Give us your view at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Uh, what now? Will you be going to the Europa League uh, to watch Celtic? Does that really float your Give us your thoughts on that. And then, of course, later on this week, we'll look to the weekend football as well. Great to have Fraser Wright on the programme. We wish him the very best of luck at Dumbarton. But from Alan Ruff and myself, Peter Martin, join us at half past six tomorrow if you can.